Hello and welcome to another episode of Metal Effort. My name is Nehemiah and today we're going to be looking at this piece of metal, the Koenig Arius. I'm really excited about this review, I'm really excited I got this knife, and I hope you enjoy this video. So first things first, let's do our size comparison. We've got our old trusty Spyderco Paramilitary 2 and our Para 3. Now, for whatever reason, this is like the magic of geometry, but the Koenig Arius looks a lot larger than it is. I think it has to do with the really high grind, but if you were to look at this and guess the length when it's not next to anything, I would personally guess like 3.75 inches, but in fact it is 3.5. But still, in the like medium to large knife size, it's much more compact than you would think it is, uh, and so I think this really shows it off. This is 3 inch blade, 3.5. 44 on the PM2. Very, very good size. It's, I thought it would be big, maybe a little too big, but in fact, I think this is like the perfect, most ideal size for a knife. So let's get into our dent the decent, the excellent, the nitpicks, and the terrible of this piece of metal. First things first, and it's the box. The box is really, really nice. Comes in a little Koenig coffin, you might say. Uh, good feel for it. Eh, there we go. A little birthday. Very recently made. And uh, I like that. I like to give shout out to a good box. Because I spent a lot of money and if they can spruce up the box a bit. Makes it a little bit more fun. The blade is really what I want to focus on here. First things first. So, like I mentioned, this is a very tall blade. And it, this helps the, the knife in several ways. First off... With this hollow grind that you have, not all of them have a hollow grind, but I think all the ones he's doing lately have been hollow grinds. Even though it's kind of a, a bigger blade and starts at a pretty thicker stock, it gets down to be very acute behind the edge. Uh, it's hard to show that off, there we go. Uh, this sucker cuts really, really well. I would put it on par with my Spidey Chef in terms of just like chopping power. Uh, which is definitely high praise. So I love that. I love that. What this does better a little bit, uh, does better than my, my Spidey Chef, that is, it, the point is a little bit more useful than the Spidey Chef without being being like a straight up, you know, spear point type of a sharp, stabby, stabby knife blade. And so what ends up happening is you just have awesome flat part of the blade, plenty of belly, and then a good, a good point. It's got this swedge, I want to pull this into focus, with the swedge having a hollow grind itself. So it gives it some visual flair, which is kind of cool, but I think it helps it be, you know, a robust tip, but still a very functional pointy stabby tip if you need it. So I, 10 out of 10 in blade shape. I really, 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 really like this blade shape. The Kind of fuller up here at the top doesn't really serve a purpose, practically speaking. Um, but I, it's not in the cutting path really at all. And even if it was, it's not that big of a deal. It's not that hard to like clean out. It's so open back here that it's not like it's tucked away and you have to get like Q-tips to clean out or anything. Like I can just rub it out with my finger. So as far as it getting like clutter in there, not really an issue. And it does make I think the knife look a lot more aerodynamic aerodynamic it, it looks like a speeding bullet train if you ask me and then to top it off you've got the opening aperture and this opening aperture is great it works perfectly fine i can flick it with my finger meat skipping the nail altogether or i can use my nail as well and it's cool in that you can do it on either end you can do it closest to the knife pivot works great you can even do it f far down at the end, works just as well. So it's not like you really have to get it in the sweet spot. It's going to open up pretty much no matter what. Uh, but as far as the ap opening aperture on the blade, they did a really, really good job. I, w I wouldn't change it too much. I have heard that some of the earlier models didn't have as much chamfering there, and I could see how that would be annoying and kind of tear apart your finger meat if you're using that. But it's chamfered enough that I'm not having that problem and it looks like they've solved it, which is cool. The backspacer is really, really nice on this knife. So 
it's got some jimping here and you know it has some aesthetic pop to it but that is actually practical too when you have the knife in your palm and you're like ready to fire it it's actually pushing up against these jimping points and so it gives you the traction you need without the knife wanting to slip out of your your hand so really subtle subtle thing here but this actually does serve a purpose and it's grabby enough to where you know it it earns its right to exist <laughs> there's a lot of jimping that doesn't have that honor the next thing I want to talk about is the lanyard. Now, the lanyard hole is something I always complain about. Um, so there's some knives that do it really well, and I, I try to point it out when I can. But this is one of the knives that I really like. It gives it that kind of tail end to the whole design package to where it like takes you a second to like, oh yeah, I could tie things through this. It's a design feature, it's a practical feature, and it's something that doesn't get in the way. You know, as far as like making the knife longer, it's like only just a little tiny bit, uh, not that big of a deal, and just in the grand, you know, shape and design of the knife, it, it belongs there, in my opinion. And you'll notice a theme as I'm kind of going through these things. So next we'll talk about the clip. The clip is really nice, and there's this very subtle design choice and production finish that makes this go from like a 9.5 to maybe even a 10 as far as how useful the clip is how comfortable it is like the whole nine yards it's not super deep carry however i'm i'm caring less about the deep carry as long as the knife isn't like comically sticking out of your pocket um if this could move up a little bit to the tail end, I wouldn't complain, so I can't give it a perfect 10 out of 10. But if I can look, I'm going to zoom in. I want you to see just how subtle this is. So right here, there is some very light machining there, and it gives just a little bit of traction, and it's so stinking subtle. If you look at it sideways, you can't even see that. But it's there and it's purposeful and it gives you a little bit of grip to pull the knife out of your pocket. Awesome. That is a great attention to detail. I, I'm really, really liking that. Since we're here, I also want to talk about the machining in the cutout for the, the lock bar. Very precise CNC work there. Very soft. Again, visual touch. Uh, just the attention to detail is amazing. You can look at the space in between the lock bar and the frame and it is super duper narrow very very fine tolerances and this side of the knife even though this is awesome and i and we'll talk more about that later this is more than just a slab of titanium i feel i feel like there's just little hidden gems for you to kind of uncover now remember when we talked about the shape of this this clip it's being mirrored two times over right here you have the hole in the clip that ha has that same like angry bird eyes kind of shape and then the cutout underneath it is mirroring that and so when you add it all up together you have these little design kind of clues that is tying the whole package together and so you have one two three four and then you got the d shape on the pivot as a five of that kind of asymmetrical kind of opening that that shape that is just really well echoed subtly in the design of the knife i really really like when art and design collide and this is a perfect example of that so all that together your fit and finish is awesome your your centering is perfect the tolerances are really tight and man it is just impressive what Koenig, Bill over there at Koenig, has been able to do and just refine his craft. And you can tell that this you know, newest model that just came out really is kind of a amalgamation of all the things he's learned, even on just this one model. You know, he's had other models like the Mini Goblin and stuff like that. But this, this is just really, really refined and you can tell that he really cares and he's paying attention to the details, which I like. The last thing I'd like to talk about about kind of the innovation before we move on to the excellent parts is this has the lightning pocket so you can kind of see inside on the cf 
side, you've got some milling going on. You also have it on the titanium side. And so I, I think the one really legitimate complaint that people had of the older Arius's, Arii, I guess, I don't know, uh, that it was kind of a heavy knife considering, you know, it's a 3.5 inch blade and they were clocking in over like five and a half ounces. So having a carbon fiber scale is already going to save you a lot on weight, but then having the carbon fiber and the titanium milled out like this, and you're really saving on weight. So to kind of cap off our decent section here, I want to weigh the sucker in. 4.4 ounces. This is over an ounce an inch, mind you. But considering this gigantic blade that you have that's really, really tall um, so that you can have that hollowing and just get to a very acute edge where you have something that's both durable and nimble, I think this is worth it. And in the hand, the, the knife is so well balanced that it feels lighter than it is. There are some knives that just kind of feel awkward or feel heavier than they are. Something, you know, like my Rockstead. This definitely weighs more than the Arius, but it weighs so much more on the blade end than it does the back end. It exaggerates that heaviness and makes it feel even worse. But the Arius is just so well balanced. You have this kind of big butt on the end that's counterbalancing that big blade. And so it just, it feels very, you know, even and light and just balanced so really like that and then lastly 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 before i get onto the the excellent the jimping on the lock bar is top notch it's very easy to to get it off and release that lock bar tension very comfortable it's not chewing you up it's just the right amount to where it's gonna grip you know you have gloves you have bare hands it's it's not gonna be a problem at all so Awesome. Okay, finally, we can move on to the excellent. Excellent is two things. The ergonomics I'm putting in the excellent category. And the more I get into knives, the more I care about ergonomics. And I think that's the thing that can really make it or break it for me. If it's uncomfortable to use, I even if it's hitting on all cylinders in every other department, I'm probably not gonna keep that knife in my permanent collection. It's, it's the thing that I care most about the more I use my knife. So, you know, fidgeting with the knives and holding it in all the different ways and just like constantly manhandling them, a good comfortable knife goes a long way. And this is definitely that. This like bottleneck kind of hourglass shape is so fantastic in the hand. Just how narrow it is right here. Like, I wanna get calipers just to give me an idea. So, The thinnest part, we are looking at 0.8, kind of on the thinnest part. And it's similar to how the PM2 is shaped, where it's got that little narrow part. And it's even thinner than that. And this is a good example of it. Some knives are just blocky as all get out to where it that's the thickest part of the knife. Like, on my Rockstead again, it's significantly significantly thicker right there and that that coke bottle kind of shape right here it gives you something to grab onto here and feel like you're in a choil i think what we like about good knife choils like on the the para 2 and the pm3s sorry reverse that is that it's not so much that we just want to be really close to the blade. I think we want our, our index finger and our thumb to be closer together. And having a choil that, you know, recesses into the knife is giving us that. And so even though you're kind of far away from the blade, it doesn't feel uncomfortable. It doesn't feel like you need to get closer to the blade because you're already getting to have that pinch grip, that control of having your your index finger and your thumb so close together. And so because it's so locked in, I don't feel like I've got this giant you know blade far away from my hand that I just can't control because I'm so locked in right here and have such precision work. 
What's more than that is I've got this crazy huge chamfer on the inside here for my thumb to rest. So it's almost like a little bathtub for my thumb to just rest in. And it gives me that leverage too when I'm pushing on the scale this way. So if I need to like twist or contort, don't do that too much with your knife, but if I'm, you know, judging on how I'm going to cut stuff out or if I'm just going through you know, foam or something like that and I want to do loops or whatever it is, I've got that control in the twisting motion just as well as the pushing and the pulling motion. So fantastic work. You have the palm swell here that fills the hand perfectly. I mean, look at that. It just it has a home right there in my hand and it curls up everything about this knife. I can move my thumb up here. I can push down on the blade, feel more connected to it if I need to or if I want to, but it's just comfortable here. And so I love that flexibility. So I, man, I don't think I've ever been so high on the ergonomics of a knife as this is. Now, this is going to have a huge asterisk. We all have different shaped hands and hand sizes. I'm a medium size hand. Um, so take that for what it is. I definitely could see it being bigger. I see you got some room to grow over here and still being pretty comfortable. If you had smaller hands, I don't know, maybe the knife would feel a little big and unwieldy for you. But for me personally, this is fantastic. I love it. Now, finally, save the best for last. And that is the action. The action on this knife is world class. You have the flipper tab. The flipper tab is so nice. It, it's kind of big, but you, you realize from a design perspective, the distance between, you know, the pivot and the end of the scale over here is shorter than the distance over here. So that, that flipper tab has to be extra tall so that there's enough of it left over on this side for us to be able to grab onto. So because of that, and because it, it deals with my beloved ergonomics, I'm not going to complain about that at all. Uh, I think it's the perfect size, and man, the action is snappy. It is awesome. I mean, acoustically, it's got that, you know, desirable thwack that you're looking for, and, you know, the, the knife is, like, vibrating in your hand after that awesome deployment. It's that snappy, that wonderful. Now, again, I mentioned that opening aperture, and the action does not disappoint. It's just as strong, just as easy no no wrist flicking and you get full force it's awesome <laughs> and then that's on the opening on the drop shut just a little nudge i didn't even touch the blade it's just letting the gravity kind of take over get it over that detent and it just drops shut so man i this is what it's this is what it's like to have a high-end, world-class action. I think I like this better than the Grimsmo as far as like watching other people use a Grimsmo. I really don't like it bouncing out of the detent. This locks into the detent and it is in, it is hard. Like if you go to like pull it open, it's like, oh, whoa, okay. And so that, that detent is very strong. I, I like strong detents. If you've been watching the channel, you, you should know that, but I don't think it's too much. Some people might disagree. I, it's such a superb action. I, I want exactly this detent on every knife, and so it's hard for me to even give a caveat. But uh, drop shut, and it and it's like perfect, perfect drop shut. I I I get it over that detent, and then I do not have to touch that blade. It, it goes in lovely, lovely. And it's so addictive to just open and shut. Now, some of you may have seen the video where Dr. Funky got a new one made and had the flipper tab deleted. And I was really intrigued by that because you, if you've been watching my channel, you also know how much I like the opening aperture and doing the spider flick. However, I don't, after having the flipper tab on this particular knife, we're talking about the Koenig Arias, I want both. The action is just so superb and having two different ways to experience that action makes me want to have that flipper tab. The second thing is because the action is so good on the drop, when I get it off the detent, I like having that flipper tab to be my like safety guard so my finger can stop it from chopping me. Because I could see if I accidentally, you know, get it off that detent ball a little aggressively, and I don't have anything to stop that blade as easily, 
it, it might nip me, you know, on my on my thumb knuckle there. So I kind of like the safety of having that there. I don't know. I'm sure I could get used to it without a flipper tab. And if somebody gave me one, I would be ecstatic. But, you know, if I'm going to have another one custom made for me, which honestly I'm thinking about because I, I love this knife so much. I kind of want to have like a user beater and just use that one all the time and then have another safe queen. I don't know. But I I think I would still keep the flipper stat, tab on a new one. Um, if I had two knives, maybe I could have one with and one without. But I would say don't be so quick to jump onto the bandwagon of deleting the feedback, the flipper tab. I think it it's so good for the action to experience that. It's probably worth keeping it on there. Um, but that that's opinion. I just think twice is all I'm saying. All right, so let's get into the nitpicks. I do have some negative things to go over. First thing, when you're opening the knife, that detent is so strong that if you're putting your fingers on the lock bar when you're trying to open it, like if, uh, let me do a little awkward thing here. I can do it if it's like on the lower half, but if I put it on the top half and try to flip, it's extremely difficult to do so. So it's not a problem because the natural way you want to hold it is put your finger right into the cutout for the lock bar. And that's like the perfect place because once my finger gets there, I know I'm, I'm in the right spot. And then you have zero pressure on the lock bar. But even if I'm, you know, doing it weirdly where I'm up here on this side instead of down here, it still opens. It's just if you're trying to choke up on it, weird. It's you kind of have to try. But if you like hand the knife to somebody that doesn't normally use knives, they're like I can't do it. They're probably pinching on this side. So, nah, not a big deal, but I'll put it in the nitpick. Next is the lightning pockets is not going to be on every single Koenig area. So, you need to be careful if you're shopping one for one, if you're getting one off, uh, you know, a used market or something. I would recommend trying to get the Lightning Pockets. They have the Style 55, I think it is, where they have cutouts on the carbon fiber part. I'm sure that would make it even lighter than this one. I don't think you necessarily need to go that far. That's maybe like a 0.2 ounce difference where Lightning Pockets to no Lightning Pockets with a carbon fiber scale is like a full ounce different. Uh, so just be careful what you're buying. If you do care about having the lightweight version, you just got to watch, watch what you're buying. Next thing is on the pivot. I, I didn't really get a chance to mention this by the way, but I really like the pivot. I think it's got a cool visual flair. I like that it's non free spinning and I like that it's on the presentation side. It just kind of makes sense to have all your screws on one side. Anyway, there still is kind of a, a raised kind of above the scale look to it. And then some crud can fit in that little groove right there. Not a big deal. And this is something that a lot of pivots have. You just get a Q-tip and you can clean it out. Or if you open up the knife to clean it out, you can obviously get in there, no problem. So kind of a small deal, but it's just something I'd like to po point out. Next is the location pins. So this is something that the Apostle P kind of brought up. When you look at the knife, it's just got the two sets of screws here and here, and then the main pivot. And that is really the only thing that is both holding the knife together, but also keeping both sides aligned. So what he's kind of like warning us is that without location pins that just stick in, then you can get some play this way, where screws just keep them from coming out. They're not necessarily good at keeping them from doing this. Obviously, you can't move it too far if you have screws in there but it's not it's not gonna be a guarantee that it's gonna keep everything properly aligned and i totally get what he's saying and it makes sense why a lot of knife makers do that even on the sheer goroffs that i've been comparing this to they have some location pins in the knife to keep everything squared up However, I think that comes with the asterisks on this knife one i don't think a lot of people are having an issue with any kind of handle play or centering issues. The tolerances on this knife are so tight. And I think just the fact that you have two sets of screws so close together here does help to keep everything aligned. I don't, I don't think it's gonna be that much of an issue in practice. So I get the concern, but until we actually see evidence of this happening on a bunch of areas, area, which we haven't, then I'm really gonna be a little skeptical on that complaint. I think you're kind of grasping for straws if that's what you're bringing up and try to be serious about it. 
Next thing is the steel. So this is XHP. XHP is perfectly fine. <laughs> this is, again, remember, it's in my nitpicks here. It's a super steel. It's awesome. I'm not going to have any problems with it. It's not going to have the edge retention of M390 or anything like that, but I'm also not using my knife to, like, baton trees down or anything. So it's not a huge deal, but that would be, like, an obvious way to make the knife better. And Bill did have versions of the Koenig early on that were coming out in 204P, which is essentially M390. I really like that steel, and it's kind of awkward because those older versions didn't most of them didn't have lightning pockets. So to get a model that has the lightning pockets, CF type work, and has the 204P, that's gonna be really hard to find if even possible. I'm not even sure how many of those knives he even made. So I definitely take the lightning pockets over 204P, but I wanna have my cake and eat it too, darn it. So I'll mention that. On the terrible, there is nothing terrible. <laughs> this knife, if it's not clearly obvious to you, I'm very high on this knife. And so as we move into the conclusion, I just want to bring up the thing I haven't mentioned yet, and that's really the price and kind of what category it lands in. Is this such a good value that $660 should be in my good? Is it just blatantly too expensive so it should be in my terrible? Is it just something that's maybe a little bit overpriced and it should be in my nitpicks? Well, I don't know. I think it depends on your perspective. If you're comparing this to a Shirogorov, the Three Bears editions, those knives are running 900 to 1100 dollars. I think this is a knife that can completely compete with those knives. In some ways, maybe even better be better than those. I have to reserve judgment. I need to get one of those knives to really have a final verdict between the two. But I think it's definitely a conversation on which one is better. So this you know even tricked out with some cool stuff is is going to be cheaper not quite half as much but i'd say 60 to 70 percent the cost so in my mind this is a fantastic value <laughs> is it a good value in your mind you can tell yourself that so that's kind of where i'm going to land on my conclusion this knife is fantastic if you have the money then it has my full recommendation for you to go buy it. And I think you're going to be really happy with it. And I, I had high expectations. And even then, I was blown away, especially by the ergonomics. Man, that, that really just sealed the deal for me. It's just so comfy in the hand. And I love the blade shape to boot. And the action is really amazing. So all those things put together, I think this is a really strong contender for probably my favorite knife, We'll see. I need to get more knives under my belt and uh, and see what the final verdict is. I, I do want to do a end of the year kind of knife winners for certain categories. And uh, this will, I'm sure, going to show up on the list in a couple places. So that's my take on the knife. I hope you enjoyed this review. And I hope that if you can, get your hands on Aries and enjoy it as much as I do. Have a good one, everybody. I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Bye.